There is an ongoing debate in education as to how technology can be integrated into the schooling process while adding value and minimising distraction. The ESA Academy, a secondary school in Bolton, has replaced chalkboards and exercise books, as well as classrooms, with 600 iOS mobile devices connected by an Avaya networking solution. It's an ambitious scheme, but one that Academy Director Abdul Chohan, who helped develop the solution, believes is stacked with benefits. Using um, iPads in the school um, and using the, the Apple ecosystem has basically allowed us um, to bring very innovative um, pieces of technology and, and, and technology solutions that makes the whole ship you know, really uh, productive and really effective. So um, the, the solution that we got from Pennine, um, the Avaya solution that we got from Pennine around the telephony um, has been one such example of that, where it allowed us to redesign spaces because um, we could access our you know, telephone on iPads and make external calls, receive calls and so on. And we could do that from anywhere in the academy, which means that we don't need traditional offices. We can have meeting rooms, but it doesn't mean that people secure a space and call it their own. Um, and that lends itself to relationships, it lends itself to people meeting one another, it lends itself to, um, you know, conversations that people will have around, you know, um, productivity and learning and so on. But how has the introduction of the iOS estate affected the everyday practicalities of education at the academy? From a, a learning perspective, um, it's allowed us to use you know, the complete ecosystem in terms of, of iTunes U and, and the way in which students um, not only get content that teachers make, but it actually gets delivered to them. You know, we operate in an age where, you know, people don't log into things, you get a text message and it pops up on your device. Um, and we're beginning to explore now, or actually we're quite, we've worked our way into this platform called iTunes U, which is iTunes University, used um, for a long time by the likes of Open University, Cambridge, Oxford, MIT, Harvard, where content and courses are made publicly available, or they can be made privately available. And what we've done is we've exploited that platform because it's cost effective, because it's free. Um, what we've done is our teachers are making courses available for students on that platform. It's easy, it's reliable, it's simple to use. Teachers can use their existing resources, Word documents, PDFs, PowerPoints, you know, right down to videos. And even if they want to create their own textbooks um, and they want to use apps, um, as resources, they can actually embed that as part of a learning journey for each student. The beauty of this is, is that when the teacher creates the lesson, it actually gets pushed out onto the student's devices. Students, teachers are able to enroll students onto their courses. Um, we get, you know, data in terms of when the student last accessed the course and things like that. Jenny Greenwood is a languages teacher at the academy. As a frontline user of the technology, how does Greenwood feel the use of mobile devices have changed the teaching process? They are a lot more independent learners. They go away and research things on their own, um, do tasks outside of school, um, and work through the work at their own. They can work through it at their own speed. So as a teacher, you've got to be a lot more inventive, but also you can have a little bit more fun with the lessons and do things that you probably couldn't do before in a classroom environment. Um, and it's, it's interactive in the fact that they can send you something instantly and you've got their work straight away and it's saved on a on your iPad or on your emails and it's there, there for good, you can't lose it, basically. Um, I think the children find it a lot more engaging because they, they love the technology anyway. So the fact that they're loving the technology and they want to use it for the lessons is, is a massive bonus, really. There's two key ingredients that we've focused on in terms of you know making... Um, the, the solution successful and that's um, just two things really it's simple and reliable you know and when technology is simple and reliable you get the third thing which schools really want which is adoption you know uh, many schools will ask the question how do you get teachers to actually use it do they use it or is it the interactive whiteboard experience it's a good idea at the time but actually nobody's using it and there's thousands of pounds that have been invested um, into schools around that. Everybody's using the projector, nobody uses the interactive piece. But 
you know, our philosophy has been that we're using consumer technology, things that you can just buy off the shelf. In the classroom, that's what teachers are using. They're using TVs, they're using um, Apple, little Apple TV boxes and iPads, um, and Macs that, they, that, they, that you can literally just buy from a shop and use. Our results um, in 2011, five or more A-stars to C's, um, were, were 100%. This year, um, we were at 97%. Our students come from some quite deprived kind of settings. 90% um, of our students come from like 10% of the most deprived areas in the UK measured by different indices. We have 46 different languages that are spoken here. You know, So some real challenges um, with students. And many of our students come from some quite war-torn countries, difficult backgrounds and so on. So some real challenges in the classroom. But giving them access to information as and when they need it is very, very powerful and it certainly supports the culture that we've created here in terms of uh, making sure that all students will succeed. Of course, while the adults make all the decisions to overhaul ESA's educational process, it's the real end users whose opinions count the most. How do the Academy's students feel about replacing pen and paper with tablet technology? It really helps because obviously in a normal school you'd probably have the computers, you'd have to book them, all that, and it takes forever to log on. And I think just having a handheld device is just a lot easier because it's quicker and I think you feel more a part of what you're learning. Even helps when you're at home. So you know how you have a laptop and that's all you're found using it. Um, with your iPad, all you do is, as in like, it says in your room, you just take it and you can use it while there's still a laptop being used downstairs. And nearly everyone has a router at home too, so they get access to Wi-Fi. Also, it, because they're three, pretty small, we had the iPods and the iPads, you can carry them around anyway, really. So if you're in town, you can still, let's say, uh, jot notes or whatever down if you're doing the survey in a shop or something. So it makes it much, much easier in your, because it's in your hand. What it was in the old school is you're in a square room, so it's like a box. And when we moved here, it's all open planned and as in you can talk properly and not disturb the other class. And in the old build it was like, shh, they can hear us upstairs, don't be that loud. And now it's, there's no limits. You can say, um, I'm taking notes on my iPad. I can take notes and as long as the teacher knows I'm not doing anything else, she's fine with it. With exam results on the up and enthusiasm high, both students and staff clearly recognise the advantages of running a school on Apple devices. And as the school rolls out still more iOS tablets to keep technology moving forward, it seems ESA Academy's school books may have been packed away for good.